Thank you very much, uh, Jim and Julie, for uh, having me here today. I'm from Southern California, and uh, what was the name of that drink that we were just talking about? I haven't tried that yet. Um, anyway, I uh, had been here in Silicon Valley in this region for about 25, 26 years. Um, as you can see in my bio that's listed on your agenda, I've uh, been at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, was also at Cal State University, it used to be Hayward, now the East Bay, running their new venture uh, center there. And I'm very happy to be back today to talk about um, a number of different things that I think are going to tie together some of what we've been hearing so far. Um, so the first thing I wanted to show you is a picture of Los Angeles on a clear day. Okay? You didn't get that joke. Okay, I'll tell you when I'm joking, all right? Uh, I think I need, I'm from the East Coast originally, so I have to tell you when I'm uh, being funny. Uh, anyway, I would, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but I was asked to talk a bit about the, the global situation and in terms of environment. I think most of us are aware of the fact that what goes on in other parts of the world, let alone in Southern California or in the Bay Area here in Silicon Valley, let alone in Oakland or, or for that matter in Pleasanton or um, north into uh, the, the uh, Napa Valley, everything impacts the other. So what we have to be aware of is that what we're doing here and the impact of our environment and our uh, waste does have an impact globally as well as throughout the region and the state. The one thing I wanted to get into though was uh, uh, brought up a little bit by the uh, host of the program, Johnson Controls. I was just at a meeting with, with them and some other people in San Antonio, Texas. And you hear a lot about this today, it's called the grid. I'm going to talk about this because I think what we are involved with and what you are all hearing this morning is not just a paradigm change. We're talking about what a colleague of mine refers to the third industrial revolution. That is not a joke. It has to do with renewable energy. It has to do with storage devices. It has to do with on-site power. We've heard a lot about solar this morning. It has to do with all kinds of technologies and innovations that are way beyond what we've experienced the last hundred years. My colleague is a friend uh, and gentleman by the name of Jeremy Rifkin. He's written it up in a book called The American Dream. It was published a couple years ago. Where is that revolution taking place? It ain't here. It's not here in Silicon Valley, I hate to tell you. It's been going on in Europe for the last decade or two. It was referred to, I think, before about solar being uh, uh, very popular and in installed. In fact, the number one country in the world with it is Germany. The number two is Spain. I flew in here this morning uh, from Los Angeles. I don't see any solar in any roofs, let alone the airport, let alone City Hall. Where is it? You fly into Germany, you see it all over the place. I hate to tell you this, this is not a joke. They have more snow in Germany than we have here in California. What is that telling us? There's something wrong. But that third industrial revolution is also taking place in Japan and also beginning to really take root in China and also India. What's happened is we have for forgotten that we are innovators and we need to do something about it. What I'm going to now talk about is what I refer to as the sequel. The sequel to an inconvenient truth. Efficiency is good, demand side management and conservation are very good, but we have to do more than that. And we have to do it because my generation screwed up. I'm not here to be psychological or be from therapy, I'm here to tell you as a scientist. We have got to make some changes, and it's for the future generation of young people in this audience, including my son who's here today. We've got to take action, and we cannot wait. And what I'm looking at now, and what I'm showing you now, is the grid. This is the way our country is set up in terms of managing energy. It's a problem. It's a uh, rec um, uh, leftover, if you will, from the second industrial revolution. Now let me get into some details of what that means and what we need to do about it. This is an example of what is referred to as part of the third industrial revolution and what I will tell you about in some detail. This is what we currently have, a central power system connected with transmission lines, the grid I just showed you. What we're now seeing is a system that certainly has some of that, but now power from wind and solar, storage devices, and some of the new transportation fuel technologies we just heard about. Those systems go on top of buildings like this, they go on top of Google, as we all know, they go on top of City Hall downtown in San Jose, and then go on top of your home. But they also go on top of shopping malls and for-profit institutions. What I'm going to talk about now, and I'm, this is a directive we heard before of, okay, what's the next six months going to be like? I'm going to give you some roadmaps the next six months here for free, okay? The next six months, the next year, not just because of the Obama administration, but what's going on in the state of California is that there are nonprofit governmental entities who have bond resources, money voted to them by the voters, 
to actually install the kind of systems that you're seeing illustrated here. And I'll give you some examples of that. Well, I, I now am the director of energy for the LA Community College District. We were just last November, the voters, 71%, voted us $3.5 billion to do this. Come to Los Angeles, you'll see it. The Los Angeles Unified School District voted itself also, 71% of the voters, $7.5 billion. Am I getting this message clear? Okay. So my point to all of you is there are resources out there and it's up to you in your communities here in Northern California and throughout our state to do just that by taking some action, not because of the market, but because those of us in the nonprofit government area have got to create that market. Do you want me to repeat that? And I can give you examples. Anybody in the room remember the PNGV program during the Clinton administration? Anybody? Partnership for Next Venture Gen Gen New Generation Vehicles. That was an effort by the Clinton administration to take money from the defense conversion after the end of the so-called Cold War and put it into new technologies. It was an interesting concept, but what it didn't do was put it into innovation. And what happened was a lot of those resources got trapped and dislocated, if you will, in other areas.